Today we're going to look at creating blob-like sections in Webflow. Now I'm not super sure if blob-like is the best way to describe this, but what we're looking at is boxes that blend together in a kind of smooth, satisfying way. And we can create one really fast in Ligma, I mean Figma, simply by creating two boxes. I have one here and one here, combine them here, and then adding a border radius. If this was a Figma tutorial, then it would already be over. But instead, we're going to look at how we can create these in Webflow in a way that adapts to different browser sizes. So we'll start with a text box for a quote, and then do a section with a blob image, and then we'll do a combo, a hero section with a blob image, a blob text box, and a regular text box. Now this is going to get a little complicated. Even though this build is going to be relatively straightforward, when you get down to tablet screen size and mobile screen size, you'll have to completely adapt those boxes to suit that size. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. So let's start with our quote text box. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a grid to build this. And to know how we're going to design our grid, I'll literally just draw some boxes. So we're going to have a box here for the text box, a box here for the quote image, and then a smaller one down here for the actual logo. And we can see if I wanted to create this as a grid, we would need a two by two. We have one here, one here, another one here, and one more here. And so let's jump into Webflow. I have my container and what I'll do is I'll just start by adding my grid. And two by two is absolutely fine for now. Uh, the only thing I might wanna do is we'll make the right side a little bit smaller for now. Actually, let's make the left side bigger. And I'm also gonna give a max width to our section, maybe about 700 pixels, or I could just check. Yeah, it's about 750. And make sure that's sticking in the center. Now let's bring out our Figma to Webflow plugin. That's gonna help us speed things up. Not that one, this one. And we can get rid of these boxes for now. One, two, three. And so let's start with our text box. Let's just copy that one over, paste that in. And this is gonna span the top left section and then the bottom left section. And super roughly, just to show you the exact styles that we have, we have a radius of 20 around all of the corners. We have a padding of 40. I might adjust that when we play with the design. And then we have the text box inside of that. And next we'll add in our uh, quote image. Do the same thing, I'm just gonna copy that to Webflow. That's good for now. Again, I might adjust the padding later on. And then finally, we'll do our logo box. Copy that, paste that in. Realize I can't copy it that way, I'm gonna copy it using this button. And then I'll paste it in again, and now that works. And so now we have all of the pieces set up for our quote box. And so I can start to adjust this to be one kind of big blob that morphs into itself. I'm literally just gonna do an overflow on the margin to connect to the bigger text box. And let me double check exactly what I've done for the actual padding. I've done 16, let's make everything 20 for now. Those are both 20 and I'll change this. And then this one's also 20, so that's fine. Now I'm just gonna adjust these radiuses so it's attached to the bigger text box a little bit more smoothly. I'm gonna do zero here, zero here, and then the bottom of here is also going to be zero. And so as you can see, this is 90% of the way there. All that's left to do is a tiny little curve in the corner here. Now the way to do this, first I'll select just my logo box. I'm gonna make sure that this is relative because we're gonna put an absolutely positioned box in here. I have my div block, let's make that absolute. And it's gonna be at the top left of the box. And we'll give it a size, we'll just make it 20 pixels by 20 pixels. We'll make everything 20 pixels to make things easy and we're gonna bring it up 20 pixels. Now, if I make this dark blue, I'll give it a dark blue coloring, and if I radius out the top right by 20, that's not the desired effect that we're looking for. We wanna do exactly the opposite somehow. So we're not gonna bring in an image, we're not gonna cheat. We're gonna do it simply with two divs. I'm gonna go back to my div, I can take away that radius for now, and what we'll do is we will uh, have no overflow in this little div right here. And I'm gonna add in a div inside of my div. Let me add that in, and this one's actually gonna be larger than 20 by 20, it's gonna be 40 by 40, and it's gonna start at the bottom right. Let me make it absolute to the bottom left, actually. Got my lefts and right mixed up. And then what we'll do is we'll make this a circle, it's gonna be uh, 40, and then we'll give it the color of our background, which is this kind of light blue. And now we have a proper curve for our quote text box. Now that we have our text quote box done, let's move straight on to a different one. Let's move on to our blob image section with our text box. And again, we'll start with a grid. So let's move to a new section 
and let's pop in a grid. And if we go back and start drawing some boxes again, we have one here, one here, and one here. Super rough, but we can see that again, we're gonna to have to use a two by two. So let me delete this, and we already have a two by two set up. I'll just change this to 20 by 20. And then for this one, rather than have two boxes that morph into each other for the image, we're just gonna use the image to span the entire grid, and then we'll put a light blue text box in the bottom right on top of the image. So let's start with the image, and I'm gonna make this grid uh, relative, so the image can be relative to the grid and I'll pop in my image that I want to use. And now it's going to be absolute to the grid. So this is going to be, uh, let's give that a Z index. It's going to be the whole size of the grid. And let's just make that 100% height, also 100%. And that image looks beautiful, but let's make it even better. Let's make it cover the grid rather than stretch to it. And let's also add in a border radius. So now we have the image in our box. Let's pop back to Webflow. I'm gonna copy this text box right here. Let's copy it. Back over to Webflow, we'll paste that in our grid and we'll make sure that we can see it. Let's go over to our text box and we'll just make that relative and give it a Z index of two. And now what we need to do is position it in the bottom right. Let's go manual. It's gonna start on the second column and also start on the second row, so now it's in the bottom right. So we're getting pretty close, we have a couple of corners to fix up. Uh, let's start in the bottom here, this is gonna be zero, another zero at the top, and now we just need to bring in another curve to curve out the image into the text box. Let me just copy this one that we already have and paste that in, and this one is going to be the curve bottom left. I could really improve these class names, but I'm not going to worry too much right now. Let me move this to the bottom and then push it out 20. Oh, we want to push it 20. Now we need to move a couple of things and change our colors a little bit. Our back color is going to be blue for now. And then our insert, let's call this curve bottom left insert. Now, if we move this along, it'll be uh, zero from this side and we actually give it a color. We'll notice that even though we have our curve, the color is overflowing into the image. There's kind of a hack that we can actually use to fix this. So what I'm gonna do is start by removing the color from our background. It's actually gonna be transparent. And then we're gonna go back to our insert and rather than change any color in the actual image itself, we're gonna give it a box shadow. And the box shadow is gonna be huge. Let's make it 3000. And then the color is gonna be the color of our background. And now that we've added our shadow, we can simply make the color of the shape transparent. And now we have our little curve set up. Now that that's working, we can simply create a duplicate for our top right. Let's copy and paste that. And this is gonna be curve top right. And we'll make sure that it's in the right spot. It's gonna be zero from this side and it's going to be negative 20 from the top and now we have our image blob section done and so let's see how this adjusts if we change the size of our browser and that adjusts pretty well and we can even give this text box a fixed size so that it isn't going to adjust our text let's just make this say 600 pixels and now when we adjust it's only going to adjust the image all right, so now that we've done our image blob section, let's move on to our hero section. I'm gonna go back into Figma and let's move up to our hero section. And this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated, so we'll take this step by step. First, let's jump into Webflow. Let's bring our hero section uh, to the top. It's gonna be our first section on the page. Go to our container and we'll add in our grid. This one is gonna be a three by three grid. We have one, two, three columns and one, two, three rows. So we'll make this three by three. And then we'll start to bring in some boxes to fit the content. So first we're gonna have a box at the top left. This is gonna be for the start of the image. Let's drop that one in. Next, we're gonna have our first block for the title. Let's copy this, paste that in. Remember that's not how we do it again. And then we'll bring in our extension, copy this properly paste this in properly and it's going to span the top two 
And then we'll move down to the next part, which is gonna be another image box. So let me bring in another box and it's gonna have the exact same image in it. And so these image boxes are kind of gonna overflow into each other. So we'll get to that in just a second, but let's move out our box to be all the way here and bring in our next title block. And then finally our text box, we'll copy that and paste that in. And so as you can see, this looks terrible. So we have some adjusting to do. Let's start with the size of the grid. Our first block is gonna be, let's go with 500 for now. And if we adjust this already, the text is kind of overflowing here. So we we'll wanna give this one a fixed width. Let's make this 850, maybe about that. And then our box is going to be auto in the second column. And so now it's fitting our text box and all of our text and it will actually adjust around that text. And so now our images are looking completely wrong. So let's work on these next. The image box is actually gonna have a hidden overflow and we're gonna make it relative. So the image is relative to that box and we're gonna give it a fixed width. Let's make it 800 for now and we don't need a max width. Let's just go none and it's gonna overflow all the way. And now let's make it absolute. And the reason we're doing that is for our second box, which is gonna have the exact same effect. The overflow is gonna be none, the position is gonna be relative, and then the image is again going to be absolute to that box. And so our width, we're gonna give it the same width, 800 pixels, it's gonna have no max width, it's just gonna keep going. And now our images are actually lining up, so we can just go absolute and bring this up to line up exactly with our image. And so we're almost there, I'm gonna go back to my top block, and I'm gonna give it some negative margin so that it overflows downwards into the image and we're keeping everything 20 pixels for now. And then we can start to round out some of these corners. So the top two, gonna be 20 pixels. Here, all of them is gonna be 20 pixels other than the top left. And now we're starting to get very close. And we can see the image isn't cropping exactly how I want it to, so I can keep adjusting this a little bit. So now our image is perfectly lining up and even better it's going to adjust. So we're almost there. We're gonna overflow our bottom box into the top. Again, we're using 20 pixels, and then we're sharpening some of these corners. We go zero at the top left, zero at the top right, and then zero at the bottom right. And we'll do our corners the same way as we did before. In fact, I'm so lazy, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Uh, we're gonna change static to relative, paste in a little corner, find out where it's hiding. It's hiding here and then bring it up to the top left. This is going to be curve top left, which I've already used. Probably could find a better class name for it, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. And then we'll do the same effect that we did before. This is going to be curve top left, insert two. It's gonna be from the top. And it's gonna have a shadow that is pink. and it's overflowing a little bit, which means I've got one of these numbers wrong. Maybe it's the grid, which it is. Make sure that's 20 pixels, and that's also 20 pixels, and now that curve is working great as well. And so now we have one left curve to do, so let's finish this off. And I'll do this one as fast as possible, ignoring all of my terrible class names. So we're gonna make this absolute to the right side. Again, it's gonna be 20. The height is actually gonna be 100%. You'll see why in a second. We're gonna give it our blue, and I'm gonna round out the bottom left, 20. And let's move this image along a little bit. Our top one is gonna overflow the margin to the right. Now this one is working okay. And now one more curve block, we'll do the same as here. I'm gonna copy this, go into my block, paste that in, find our curve block, and it's gonna to be to the top right. Let's go curve top right two. It's gonna be absolute to the right side. In fact, it's actually gonna come in 20. And then finally, the insert is gonna be blue. Let's copy the insert, give it a new name, and give it a background color. And now we're finally done, and of course in a way that's gonna adjust down and adjust up as we move our browser.
So that was quite a long process and rather than hope that you followed every single one of my steps perfectly, I'm just going to let you duplicate this project so you can play around with. So I'll put that link in the description below. So that's everything that I have on creating blob-like sections in Webflow. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So thanks for watching. Make sure to consult your doctor before implementing this and I'll see you on the next one.